Welcome to this Create with Copper video. I'm Teresa from Lily Tree, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this wave bracelet. For this project you'll need, for the focal piece, a small bead around 4-5mm to in diameter, today I'm using a 4mm turquoise, about 11cm of 1mm diameter wire, although I recommend having slightly more than you need, and around a metre of 0.25mm wire. And for the rest of the bracelet, you'll need around 60 centimetres of 1mm wire, or 36 centimetres of 1mm wire, and approximately 15 jump rings. The tools you need are flat nose or chain nose pliers, and two pairs are useful for opening the jump rings, round nose pliers or bail making pliers, wire cutters, a hammer and block, and optionally nylon jaw pliers and a sharpie. If you're making jump rings, you'll also need a mandrel to make the coil, coil cutting pliers, and a jeweler's saw. So the first thing we're going to do is make the frame for the focal piece, starting with the point in the center. If you look at that side on, you'll notice it's not a point at all. The two wires are actually lying on top of one another. So if we take the small piece of one millimetre wire, I've got about 20 centimetres here. Find about the centre um, and then bend that over. Start slowly. Take your time, but try to make a nice sharp angle with it. Once you've got to a certain stage, you can then just sort of pinch it in. There needs to be a small gap so the wires can get through, but other than that, they're lying pretty much parallel to one another. Now I'm going to use my bell makers here. I think it makes it a bit easier, but you can use round nose pliers. I'm going to use the largest step on the bell making pliers and just bend that, that wire round. Take both wires at the same time, it's a little bit easier. Just make a nice rounded curve with that shape. Then I'm going to go in again with the smaller step on the same side and just taking the top wire this time, just bend that around. And just keep going to get a, a nice smooth shape. Now I want to go in and just make that point a little tighter. Now the two wires are still lying on top of each other quite close into the point so I just want to separate that out a little bit. I'll take two flat nose pliers and just gently pull them apart. I can now check how well my beads fitting into that centre. There needs to be a small gap around it just for where the weaving wire is going to sit. I think that's quite good at the moment. Now I'm just going to finish shaping the, the rest of the, the tails. I want these to go around a little bit further. And just keep a little bit of a gap just going down the stem there. I'm quite happy with that shape, so I just need to figure out where the, the ends are going to be now. Quite a useful way of doing this is to just offer it up to a ruler or a guideline, and you can just kind of figure out where those loops are going to need to be.
So I want to put my first small loop a little further up from that to sit next to the larger one. I'm just going to cut it off a few millimetres, five, six millimetres away from where I want the loop to be. And then with my round nose pliers, right at the tip, I'm just going to make the smallest loop that I can. Now for the larger loop, I'm going to use the smallest part of my bell making pliers. Just going to cut that a little larger to account for the larger loop. And then just taking it into the pliers, bend that round into a nice, nice loop. The idea is that the two loops will sit next to each other. Now I just want to hammer it a little bit to harden it, work harden it um, and help keep its shape. I don't want to hammer that piece where the wires are still sitting on top of one another. So just being mindful of that area, just carefully start hammering. Now you could hammer this quite gently if you didn't want to flatten it out too much. I quite like it being just a little bit flat. So just continue till you're happy with the look. Now what you might find at this point is that it just needs a little bit of reshaping. So just make sure you're happy with the shape. And then what I want to do is have the gap for where the bracelet's going to fit onto this at the top. So just to make sure I know where that's going to be, I'll place a, a little guide on there. If you get your Sharpie pen, you can just make a small mark at the top to refer to. Now we're ready to start the weaving. For this I'm going to be using my 0.25mm wire. But before I get started, I'm just going to pop a little guide wire in with a bit of scrap of wire, just so that that uh, leaves a space where the bead wire is going to come through a little bit later on. Once you've got that fixed in place, you can just pop the end of the 0.25 wire down into that center point just next to and outside of that guide wire and just wrap it round a couple of times just so that the free end of the wire is to the left as you're seeing it now if it's easier you could just leave the, the piece of wire that you've just poked through and use the, the long end but I just find it easier to use that short bit just to affix the wire. So now we've got two wraps on the inside wire, the top wire. I'm going to take two wraps around the outside bottom wire. So I'll go around the back and then through the middle of the two wires, around the back and then through again. And each time just want to make sure that's nice and tight. We're then ready to come back over on the front wire, wrap around the front wire. 
So I want to go through the centre this time. And then just pop that through. Now 0.25mm diameter wire is a little bit notorious for wanting to kink and get in the way of itself and all sorts of stuff so you do need to be just a little bit patient with it. Now we've got the weave started we can take the guide wire out um, that's also getting in the way a little bit so we can unhook that and just remove that. And then we can continue with our weave and we're just going to keep going two wraps at the back two wraps at the front uh, for a couple more times so probably about three wraps in total but you'll know when you're getting to the point where you've got to change the numbers when you feel like one side's getting behind or in front of the other Once you've got a few more wraps on there, what I've tended to do is uh, to take the number down on the inside to start with. So just one wrap around that inside and then either two or three on the outside, moving up to three on the outside. And if you find you've got a kink in the wire at any point, just stop what you're doing. Try and kind of bend it back the way that it has has bent. And just straighten that wire out. This is where the nylon jaw, jaw pliers come in quite handy. Just to make sure it's nice and straight again. So as I was saying... Once the wires start to separate, take the number of wraps down on that middle wire to one, then wrap on the outside perhaps two times, one on the inside and then maybe go up to three on the outside wire. And as soon as you are able, um, put two wraps back on the inside wire and upped it to four on the outside wire. It's just a little bit more secure if there are two wraps rather than one. And just keep weaving around that curve. Really the only guide to how many wraps to put around each wire is that the uh, links between them, the spokes if you like, are all looking like they're kind of forming neatly into the, the centre. I'm expecting to get about five wraps on the outside curve and two on the inside at the widest point of the, the separation. Now I'm about up to where that gap needs to be. So I can just check where I am. If your mark is still on there, you can see exactly where you should be. If not, just pop it back on the guide and remake the mark. You can then continue weaving up to two or three millimetres up to that mark. Try and finish with the weaves on the outside and then inside we're just going to wrap 
around that inside curve to make that gap. But we're also now at the point where the bead needs to go on. As you can see, the wire stretched across the centre will hit that point where the wire needs to come out. So if we can just get the bead and pop that on, thread it on, and then thread that wire through that small gap that you made with the scrap piece of wire at the beginning. So just take the wire through the gap, pull it carefully, make sure there aren't any kinks in the wire. It's going through straight. Once the wire's through, you then want to take it over the top of the frame wire and then back through the bead. You might find the nylon jaw pliers are quite useful at this point just to straighten out that, that wire end. Again, make sure that wire is nice and tight. The wrap's neat at the centre. Everything's sitting in the right place where you want it to. And then we're ready to continue wrapping. And as I said, at the moment, we're just wrapping around that centre frame. This is also a good point just to check that your frame is still in the right place. It might just have uh, moved out of alignment as you were weaving. Then we'll just carry on wrapping to create that gap. Now once we've created enough wraps to, to make that space at the top, we can then continue the weave as we had previously. So we'll go back over to the outside wire and then continue the number of wraps that you'd left off with. So for me that's five wraps over the outside wire. Then we'll just continue this weave down, gradually reducing the number of wraps as it slims down. Now once the wires have come back together again, you want to be back at the two by two weave. So two on the outside and then two wraps on the inside. And just continue down until you get to that small loop on the outside wire. And you can just check your wraps, make sure everything's neat and tidy and just make sure there's enough space at the end of that little loop to finish the, the last two wraps you can fit in there. Just get those wraps in and then we can do single wraps around the inside wire 
just up to the end where that loop hits the wire. Now you can see with the hammering, uh, that's just pushed that loop out a little, it's not touching. So we'll just pop that back in so it is. So we just get those last few wraps in there. Make sure they're all tight. We can fit in as many as possible. And then once we're finished with the wraps, we'll cut off the rest of that wire. Can just check that we've cut it flush there's no bits that will catch and then the focal piece is completed now we need to complete the bracelet and we're going to start by creating the little figure of eight links i actually call them extended figure of eight links because if you look carefully the two wires, as they bend back, don't quite meet, so they don't look like they're crossing over. You could make them slightly shorter and make them cross if you wanted to. But I recommend cutting all your wires before you begin. So once you've got one piece the length you want, just match it up against another piece of wire and trim that to the right length. Then for each piece of wire, you just need to pop in your bell makers or your round nose pliers. I'm using the bell makers so I've got consistency of all of the loops. One side, turn it round and then just turn the other side in. And that's the basic form. But just for a little bit of added strength, I'm going to hammer them. Once you've hammered each of the links, you'll probably find that the loops have uh, just kind of opened up a little bit again. So you just need to close them back again. And your figure of eights are ready. You'll then need your jump rings. And if you're making your own jump rings, just create a little coil. I'm using my bail makers again here as the mandrel, just to make sure they're all a consistent size in comparison with the other loops that I'm using. You could just use an ordinary mandrel. Create your coil. Pop it into the coil cutting pliers. and then saw through one side of each of the, well, of the coil to create each of the jump rings. You're now ready to create the chain on either side of the focal piece. Basically, each of the figure of eight links are going to be linked together with a jump ring. But before you do that, you might want to decide which way you're going to have the links. You can have them facing all the same way, or you can have them alternating. But it's worth just lining a few of them up and just deciding which way round you want them to be. Make sure they're all consistent. You then just need to link each of the figure of eights together with a jump ring and continue working the chain until you've got seven links on either side.
once you've got all the chain together you can then link it to the focal piece with a jump ring on either side. One will go in the loop and the other will go in the space that you left in the weave. You now just need a hook and a slightly larger jump ring at each end of the bracelet. For the hook I'm using 3.5 centimetres of 1mm wire and I just need to start with a very small loop one end, go right at the tip of my round nose pliers, just create the smallest loop that I can. I can then squish that down a little bit further with my flat nose pliers. I really do want it as small as I can possibly get it. Then using my bail makers, I'm going to go in. Now I know it's the middle size that I want. So just pop it in there and bend right the way around so it's almost touching the small loop that I've just made. That's creating the main part of the hook. I can then go back in with the smallest of the bell making steps and create a larger loop on the other end. Then we're going to hammer that to help to give that some strength too. Once again you'll find hammering has expanded the wire so just close the loop up and make sure the hook is the, the shape that you want it to be. It's then ready to fix on the end of the bracelet with another small jump ring and with a larger jump ring the other end. And that's the bracelet completed. The only thing to decide now is whether to keep it in its bare copper state or whether to antique it with the liver of sulphur patina. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below or contact me on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to my channel um, and check out my blog for more hints, tips and projects. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.